Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, let's do a twofer. We're going to talk about the latest in this whole X-Men saga, X-Men number four, and Marauders number five. I liked one of them. I didn't like the other. We may have another book on the X-Bubble. Let's talk about that today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Happy New Year. It's 2020. It's a bold new era in both comic book news and in X-Men. So today we're going to talk about the two X-Men books that came out this week. Uh, we're going to talk about Marauders number five and X-Men number four. I'm going to tell you right up front, I don't think I'm going to be reading uh, Marauders after this issue. I'm just losing a little bit of interest. Um, on the other hand, uh, I enjoyed this issue of X-Men, So, uh, but why? Let's find out. How do we find out? In the Million Dollar Comics Cam. Okay. Million bucks doesn't get as much as it used to. So we're going to start today. Uh, we'll let, let's start with X-Men. Um, this book uh, attempts to this issue uh, attempts to define what the state of the world, the the geopolitical situation of the X Men. Sure, we've talked about it a lot already in all the X Men books, but let's really drive home what it means in the wake of the uh, failed or rather not totally successful assassination attempt on Charles Xavier. Um, how how are the X Men going to relate to the rest of this? of humanity who have sent somebody to kill him. Well, where do they go? They go to Davos, Switzerland. And let's take a sec, talk about Francis Yu, the artwork. This is by far my favorite of all the X books. I'm definitely going to keep reading the Hickman and Yu X-Men. I love uh, Yu's artwork. It's really great looking, beautiful, distinct stuff, good storytelling. Hickman is making an attempt to kind of compress the storytelling. Each of these issues has been a sort of, not one shot, they're all tied together, but like you can read a single issue and get kind of a single bit out of it. Some of that's good, some of that's bad. Let's talk about how it plays out in this issue. Love this, these designs uh, by you for the X-Craft. This is like, you is clearly the one of the better artists remaining at Marvel and definitely the best on any of these X-Books. So, uh, issue for global economics. Um, we've gone to a nine-panel grid style for this, essentially. Very Watchmen-esque, right? Well, it's not always nine panels, but it's always some variation of the nine-panel breakdown. Very old-school storytelling. Let's us get uh, a lot of stuff, and this issue has a, a nice density of reading to it, um, although not a lot happens. Um, there's a lot of nice character moments. So this is the, the, the X-Men being invited to Davos, Switzerland, essentially Xavier and uh, um, Magneto and Apocalypse, for whatever reason, is chosen. You know, they're the elder statesmen of the council, I guess. So they all go together and they've got their uh, bodyguards. Scott Summers came along as well as uh, Gorgon, who is the official like um, bodyguard of these uh, chief muckety-mucks. So we get to dinner, and, and right away we see that the humans have got something planned, right? While they're sitting down to dinner, uh, one of the guards, I guess, accidentally, uh, who, who, who are all mind-shielded, accidentally removes his thing for a second. Charles Xavier's on to them. He knows there's there's kill, kill teams above and below them. But rather than, like, causing a scene at the dinner, he just sort of instructs Cyclops to take care of it. And so what we get is a back-and-forth conversation a lot of it between Magneto and, and, and the rest of the world, but we also had some cool stuff with Apocalypse um, and, and, and uh, Charles Xavier himself, basically laying out how it's going to be from now on. Um, and, and one of the cool moments I liked is when uh, Apocalypse talks about, they talk about why humanity has gone up and down in the Age of Reason and how there was a Dark Age before the Bronze Age and whatever will cause the fall of the Bronze Age and Apocalypse, Apocalypse says that he did. I like that moment. Um, so 
what we get is back and forth, but basically Magneto laying it on the line. He's like, look, man, humans taught us really well how to do this whole international relationships thing, right? America keeps people under its economic and uh, yoke and uh, military yoke and keeps you hooked on drugs and whatever. And that's what mutants are going to do too. We're going to give you those drugs that you so desperately need to help your people, but we're going to keep you hooked on them. We're going to keep you buying more than you need even and paying more than you should because that's the human way. We learned it from you. Social commentary? All right. Um, and Xavier ex or uh, Magneto explains how the difference is now. Like he's like, in the old days, I would have just seized control of all your weapons with my uh, magnetic powers and, and, and showed you who's boss. Now I'm gonna, we're going to be a little bit more subtle about it. And, and, and while Cyclops is down taking out the SEAL team or whoever, Magneto's like secretly helping him with his magnetic powers, but nothing over, right? They're keeping it real low key, going back and forth between this discussion and, uh, and the battle. Meanwhile, Magneto's really just laying it out, right? He's like, we're going to make life better for everybody, and then we're going to take the money, and we're going to... Uh, we're going to buy up the media. We're going to buy the banks. We're going to buy your schools. We're going to buy your politicians. Um, you know, we're going to basically do, we're going to do it the American way. Um, and, 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 and that's just how it's going to be. Right. And the stake is fantastic. These guys are a little bit shocked to be like, talk to, uh, in such a realistic manner. Like this is the unspoken truth of international relationships with America and other countries. Think what you want about politics, but every country is viewing it from their own subjective worldview. And, and, and that's just showing that the X-Men are looking out, not the X-Men, but the mutants are looking out for the interests of Krakoa and, and mutants. We get to see some scuff with their cool, who are the captains of the guard and my Cyclops. Uh, and in this case, Gorgon is the 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 chief protector of the uh, executive squad where Cyclops is the captain commander commander of all of those guys and okay um the the world is like why you know you're telling us you're telling us all this stuff the Americans and other countries why would you tell us this stuff and think that we wouldn't kill you and he's like Xavier's like look, look you tried to kill us already you, you know we tried to cooperate we reached out to you, you told how it would be you sent assassins to kill me, but I don't die, right? You can't kill me that way. So that ain't, that's not going to work. Um, and and that, look, and, and here we are in Switzerland of all places. This is supposed to be neutral ground, neutral territory, and you've got assassins above and below me. I know you're trying to kill me. We, we're taking care of that. We just want to make sure that you guys know that we know this is how we're new to this whole international relationship thing. But if you try to do it again, we're going to respond, right? It's a little weird. You get assassin, multiple assassination attempts and then in, in Switzerland. But I mean, really, humanity is trying to, is seeing itself as outside of itself from the mutants. So, okay. Um, and then uh, what do we got here next? Seraphim. Seraphim? What's that? That's a, a, a character from uh, the Mike Carey run on X-Men. I was doing a little bit of research, a lot of crazy superpowers. We've seen her already earlier in, somewhere in the House of X Powers of X series, and maybe that'll be interesting. What's really been cool is I, I, I thought it was gonna be more like, let's just go back to the old school roots of X-Men, but Hickman really has reached back and not just to the Claremont years, but beyond. He likes the Mike Carey years and some of the more recent stuff. And uh, we're going to see a little more of that more recent stuff here in Marauders number five. So let's talk about this for a second. Um, I don't think I'm going to read Marauders anymore. Let's take a look at why. So it starts off with very kind of subpar artwork. And we've got Iceman, our Omega level mutant, and uh, Christian Frost, uh, Emma Frost, White Queen's son. And they're hang out together. And he's showing off how he's an Omega level mutant, right? Like that's the most powerful level of mutants. And like, oh, he made it snow. Okay. I mean, if this artwork, this is, this is lifted straight out of manga circa 2001 
uh, stuff. So this is a little bit weird, but okay. Different styles of artwork, that's okay. But we've got multiple artists working on this. We got Jerry Duggan writing, but then we got Matalo, Matteo Lolly and Lucas Warnick on the artwork. And I mean, it's there's such a night and day difference between the artwork. I mean, it's we see here it starts getting more more detailed, but so different than that early manga stuff. And we're trying to preserve some kind of, oh, X-Men are very um, cosmopolitan and there's a lot of uh, uh, romance and what go whatnot going on between all the members. And isn't that great? Maybe. This artwork, some of it just seems like this looks like a recognizable swipe. I can't figure out where that's from. Others, uh, as we get keep going into the, the, the bishop and... Uh, storm part of the story we get to see some stuff there going on a rescue mission and what do we get they open the door and they say and the guy the first thing the guy says they waited to hit how did you handle their power dampening gear if you watched any of my x-men reviews you know that like this power dampening thing is just becoming a crutch everybody's got power power dampening stuff to stop the x-men why can't you just have weapons? Like the X-Men, okay, are powerful, but like you can still shoot them and kill them and fight them. And well, you can't kill them. We'll talk about that in a second, but you can still fight them conventionally. Why does everybody have down to the redneck terrorists in the previous New Mutants issues? And these Russian guys are back again with this Russian power dampening armor. Okay, they've got like they shoot you with power dampening. It doesn't hurt, didn't hurt them. It just took away their powers and this is the one part i liked of this book he says try to fight powerless and storm's like you think i'm powerless you cannot take my power and she stabs this guy in the eye with a knife she pulls out a knife this is cool this is true to storm she's more than just weather powers she had extended periods where she lost her powers she was the leader of the x-men even with no powers and the leader of the morlocks and she fought callisto hand to hand and beat her so uh, storm is tough and nobody denies it and i like this moment she's a lot more than just the weather goddess storm but that's it that's all i liked and then we get to see our reveal of these guys these villains the hominis verdes guys i guess they come from a previous jason aaron run on the x-men we get another thing here explaining i guess something i don't care we get some subpar artwork in general. It's okay. Some of it looks nice. This looks like it was swiped again from somewhere. I can't tell, but like some of the panels looks better, so much better than others. I don't know what is going on here. Oh, Kitty is phasing the boat through the other boat. That's cool. And then finally we get the a cool looking page of the attack of the hominus verendi, right? And I don't care. Okay, you come and you're punching Iceman. Iceman, who's the Omega level mutant, right? Dude, when you're an Omega level mutant, that doesn't just mean, I don't know what it means, but it should mean he should be able to freeze them from, you know, a mile away seeing them, right? He should be able to freeze the atmosphere and the molecules and the water that they're coming out or whatever. It's a little silly. Um, Marauders, you've lost me. I just don't care anymore. I took this off my pull list. I also took Excalibur off my pull list. Um, what do we got here? Next time, um, Backstabbers. Yeah, guys, uh, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to be Mr. Negative in 2020, but um, X-Men, you're going to have to do a little bit better. I do like the this X-Men book. This, the, the U Hickman X-Men is a solid, good comic. They're not rushing it and pushing out too many issues, not doing a lot of filler. They're keeping it good. I'm going to keep reading this book. I'm going to keep reviewing it on this channel. The other ones, uh, I, I, I ditched Excalibur now. I've ditched uh, Fallen Angels, and I've ditched Marauders. But that's okay. We got new X-Men stuff coming down the pike, Wolverine, new Wolverine series coming, and other X-Men stuff. I will definitely review the early issues. But I am not going to keep reading crappy comics, even for you people who I love. You know, uh, I love reading comics, but there's just not enough time or money in the world for me to read comics I'm not enjoying. 
Um, I hope you all had a chance to watch my uh, uh, 2019 wrap-up video. I really liked it. I had a lot of fun doing it. I know it was long, but I dealt with a lot of stuff. and covered a lot. Look back at all the reviews that I've done in the past six months or so here since starting this YouTube channel. Um, and it's been a blast. It's successful because of you. You guys, the regular watchers. Uh, you uh, people that are commenting, that are talking about and engaging on uh, about comics with me. It's really making my day, my, my year. Uh, it's super exciting. And uh, I can't wait to do more. I'm going to do more videos. I'm going to keep, you know, I I'm not going to do revolutionary change in 2020. It's going to be evolutionary. You're going to see a few new elements added, a few new types of videos. I'm going to keep refining what I've got. Uh, I need you to keep liking, commenting, and disliking if you don't like it, of course. Um, but most of all, just thanks for tuning in and watching and talking about comics. We will see you next time.